Hi and welcome back. Uh, since we got this piece done, we'll take a look at it and see what it looks like. I don't think it looks too great, but at least there's paint on it. But uh, we're going to jump back to this. And uh, it's probably going to be a really short video because it's really cold out here. And it's already late. And the rest of this week is going to get down into the single digits. So my videos may be on the short side just because... I can't spend too much time out here because it really messes with my hands. But uh, we'll uh, measure and remeasure and try to get this thing squared up and uh, fitting, fitting right. Uh, thing I'm gonna do is gonna tighten the uh, bushing down on the brace and get that. So there's no uh, kind of wedge in it when we let the body down on it. May have to put the cherry picker back on here to uh, make sure this is level. And then once we get that, we'll start uh, measuring for the uh, 17 down to the floor. So we can't get that done. And then we may try to put the door pillar back on it and see what it looks like again. But uh, other than that, we're just gonna be doing a bunch of measuring and looking and uh, kind of tweaking and fitting. But if you notice over here, Get my hand right. Got some uh, one shot lettering paint. And uh, Mac Double Zero brush. I think I'm gonna start a uh, separate channel from this and it will focus on pinstriping, which I wanna get better at. Uh, so I figured if I kinda do it along the same lines I've been doing on the Bronco, then Hopefully I'll get better at it. But that's gonna cover this. Uh, of course, we'll be doing more forging on that channel, making more tools and possibly some knives. And uh, my wife wants me to do a, I don't know if y'all seen it, but it's a, a river table. It's basically two live edges of a piece of wood and you put epoxy in the middle. Uh, she wants me to make one of those or a couple of those and i've never done it before but i've done some epoxy stuff uh, this kind of stuff i don't know if you can see with that and these kind of things this had a dirt dauber's nest on it but but uh we'll be doing stuff like that on the other channel but this channel is going to be uh car Bronco related, Healy related, just kind of cars I got in my collection, fixing them up and uh, stuff like that. But once I get some videos out, I'll I'll share a link down at the bottom if y'all want to check it out. I think uh, if it's not too cold tonight after this, I'm gonna shoot my first video over here and journey down the world of pinstriping. I know it's uh, gonna be difficult. Hopefully, I can get into this and which I had this paint sitting around for four years or so. So I kind of picked it up and kind of like the Bronco, picked it up, did it for a while, and then just let it set. So so we're gonna, I'm gonna start a different channel on this and hopefully get better. Cause I do want to letter, hand letter the uh, Ford on the grill and the Ford on the back. And if I get good enough, maybe do some pinstripes in the body lines or something. But uh, that'll be further down the line, but uh, yeah, if y'all are interested in seeing the process of how I do this and hopefully get better at it, uh, once I get some videos up, I'll leave a link in the description. But uh, anyway, tonight, let's get over there and uh, start to look at this a little bit better. All right, as you can see, this didn't turn out too great. It's relatively smooth, except you know, right through here, but I mean, you can see I didn't get all the sand it down all the way and I left a bit lops in here but like i said before this is all gonna be blasted again and uh gone over with proper uh filler and proper sanding and proper proper primer too because this stuff is just that rattle can stuff just want to put it on there to uh actually feels pretty good right through there to get right there <laughs> but uh until i get Further down the line, I don't want it to start rusting out. But tonight, 
This is what we're gonna be focusing on. I'm gonna put my bushing back in there and just cinch the bolt down on this. And uh, I gotta lift it up first. So I actually put the bushing in there and then we'll tighten it down, see if we can't get this brace to set, set level instead of kicking up. But uh, let's uh, guess put you on something and we'll uh, start working. I think we got a pretty good result. Uh, just tighten that down. It's not as tight as I get it, but enough where nothing moves down here. And the wedge I saw is almost non-existent. Non-existent. So you can see there is more pressure here than there is here. But when I put my level on it you can see it's pretty good I mean it's not perfectly level same way as that over there within the bowl there and almost within the bubble there and up up here it's just a little off and i wasn't far off from 17 from there to the sorry from there to the floor so i'm thinking if i raise this up where this is level then this may give me my correct dimension here My plan for that didn't work out. So I released these. I don't know if you noticed the snap, but now it's not level at all. It looks like uh, everything's leaning. So, I mean, this end is up. So, somewhere I got pressure coming in on this side of this brace here, pushing this down. And that's acting like, uh, I guess, a fulcrum. And it's making this kick up. Now, if I had it all down like I had it, that was enough, I guess, clamping pressure to keep this this brace down and once I let it go it just kicked that end up you can kind of see how this is sitting this is really smashed down on this side and this has a gap I'm gonna stick my fingernail in it and I can't do that over here but right through there I can get a better picture of it so that's my big issue. 
and I got that bolt down tight, tight. If that pan was in there, it'd give it some, some structure. But don't know if that pan is good or not, if that makes sense. So I don't know. I'm, I'm still leaning to clean these welds off get this where it's level and weld that better because it moves right there. I may have to put something, jack something up underneath up here and get this level with a jack under it here. Get that level, put my pan in and check for my uh, measurement here and if everything works out then maybe start welding in Jason from Jason and Joni's builds told me not to worry about the holes lining up which makes sense I mean no telling who stamps these parts and they're not always gonna line up so I'm not too worried about that anymore but I just worried to apply this it keeps popping up. He did mention that I might need to check my frame to make sure my frame's straight. And he told me how to do that, so I may I may do that off camera and uh, make sure it's not twisted because it has been in a wreck before. But I didn't notice it driving weird or anything when I drove it. Well, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, don't feel like we did much at all. Just raised more questions than answers. Uh, if y'all have an idea on how to get that where it doesn't pop up, please let me know. Uh, like I said, I'm probably going to, if nothing, put some underneath the transmission tunnel and jack it up from there since that's where I think the pressure is coming from is down on the inside of this brace here. Jack that up where it's just level with the uh, brace so that you could tell that bushing had a little wedge in it. Uh, where there's no wedge there and just keep that under there and kind of go off of uh, off that and kind of make everything fit in here and try to get that my 17 anyway that's that's what I'm thinking about going with now and if I do do that I may weld the kind of where the metal's bent I may even try to bend a little bit of flat stock and kind of put it in that bend at that angle that's level, just tack around it, kind of make that a little bit stronger and see if that might help keep it, keep it level instead of popping up. Uh, that's my idea. And welding, again, welding that seam up a little bit better too would probably help. That's what I'm leaning, leaning as right now. And uh, <clears throat> Tom, if you're watching, I measured from the uh, driver's side firewall to the inside of the uh, radiator support. And I got 34 and 9 sixteenth, 9 sixteenth inches. And I was kind of off from what you got. But uh, if I measure that, how, how you did, let me know. If not, I'll, I can remeasure. It's no big deal. But I basically, where the driver's side brake, brake reservoir was, I measured right in there, all the way to the inside of the uh, front radiator support or grill, whatever you want to call it need to remeasure that somewhere else let me know uh, and I can do that if you made it this far thanks for watching we'll really hit this hard there may be a bunch of just measuring and moving stuff fitting and not a lot other than just uh, trying to find correct placement for everything but once we do we'll we'll start to tack weld everything spot weld everything in so I do think I got my welder in a good spot like I said before it it seems to work pretty well thanks for watching if you're new to the channel, I post every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, it's going to be over the Bronco. Try and get it done. Like I said, I'm going to take you all through everything I do to it. Just like tonight was just nothing but tightening the bushing down, seeing how that flexed, and trying to think of how to correct that whole situation. But like I said, I'm not going to do... Unless I absolutely have to, I'm not going to do this whole reconstruction on the driver's side. Just going to repair the rough parts, which is mainly down this area on the kick panel. 
and the inner rocker and the floor. Of course, the outer rocker too. But uh, I'm gonna leave as much metal as I can in here because I do not want to do this again. Uh, this is taking way too long. Of course, I don't know really what I'm doing, but uh, anyways, yeah, we'll keep working on that. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.